Jordan, yes. Can you tell to my audience uh, something about you? You know, I was on your session, but you know, and I'm big fan of you. And in few minutes, I will tell you why. Okay. But can you tell to my audience who are you and uh, what is your responsibility in Wheel Towers, Watson? Sure. Yep. Uh, so Gordon Davy, I'm the head of cloud architecture at Willis Towers Watson. And I've been in the company for only six months, and before that, working for a number of different service providers and IT vendors. Uh, I'm your big fan, okay. and I, I will tell you why. So, you told that uh, you are using uh, cloud solutions in yep. the, your organization, but uh, you are not a big fan of private cloud. Yes. Yep. Correct. Why? So uh, yeah, it's maybe an interesting position for, for me to have, uh, based on my background, that I've worked for uh, some hardware vendors in the past, but uh, I think the, the main benefits you get from the cloud are generally only found in the large public clouds. The, the true scalability, the true agility, and uh, whenever an organization is using a private cloud, there's generally some compromise there, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're not getting all of those benefits. So, so yeah, I guess the, the main reason I'm a big fan of public cloud in particular is you really do get all of the benefits that the cloud promises or can do if you harness it correctly. Yeah, that's good. I, I'm also a big fan of this idea. So, but uh, you decided to choose uh, Microsoft Azure, right? Yeah. True. So, what was you know uh, the the you know the main idea about choosing uh, Microsoft Azure? Sure. So we decided we wanted to choose a specific cloud provider. We wanted to choose one to, to start with and, and really focus on over the first four or five years of our, our journey uh, into public cloud. So we knew we didn't want a multi-cloud strategy as such. Uh, the reason we chose Microsoft was, was quite a natural choice for us. We were a, a large Microsoft house already, oh, okay. uh, using a, a lot of uh, Windows Server at the back end, a lot of SQL Server from a database perspective. A lot of our developers develop in Microsoft platforms, so we're already very invested in the Microsoft ecosystem. So uh, Azure was an obvious choice for us, but we found it really does integrate very well with everything we're doing across the rest of the ecosystem. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, but you talked also that you know uh, your CISO, uh, uh, Chief Security Officer, yep. is also a big fan of uh, yes, yep. this idea. Yeah, yeah. No? What? So yeah, so our CISO really sees cloud as a way to enable security within the infrastructure. Uh, we can obviously implement all the same security solutions on premise as we would in the cloud, that you can put the same controls in place, but many of the big platforms already have those solutions implemented. So when we want to activate encryption on a solution, it's generally yeah. a checkbox, yeah. <laughs> and now your solution is encrypted. Rather than having to go and procure an encryption solution, deploy that across your organization, your data centers, and make sure it's configured correctly. So it's actually much easier to implement a lot of the security requirements we have within a cloud platform than it is on premise. Yeah, but you know, in old days, you had you know your own data center yep. and only servers, and that's all. And now you have you know your own data center, you have some kind of virtual machines and you have, you know, platform as a service yep. or services as a platform, as you talked. Yep. And, you know, how to manage security in this type of, uh, you know, scenario, then you, you have infrastructure, platform, uh, services, etc. Yep. So, yeah, there is undoubtedly more complexity there, but uh, the security principles are the same. So, uh, we have our, our security requirements that actually or remain the same whether a workload is being deployed on premise oh, okay. or in the cloud. The requirements are the same. Now, the way we may uh, so the, the apply same, those controls. The same document for both? Absolutely, the uh, same okay. requirements. Now, the way we implement the controls may be different based on the platform because the platforms operate differently. But because we have that unified, consistent uh, approach to our security requirements, uh, it becomes much simpler for our InfoSec team to understand what they're trying to achieve. Yes, there's complexity in how they go about it with the different yeah. tool sets, but uh, because they have a, a single goal and it's consistent, it, it does make it more straightforward. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> so, I have also a question about Microsoft Azure. Hmm. So, from your perspective, yep. I'm your head of cloud infrastructure and architecture, so what is the best part of Microsoft Azure for, for uh, your company and also what is the world? part of Microsoft Azure? Okay, good question. So uh, I 
I think that the best part is the not continually evolving services. So a lot of that platform is a service layer. We are already seeing huge benefits from it. But the fact that it's so tightly integrated to what we're doing on premise already, as I said, with our with our Microsoft heavy focus previously, has made that transition very simple. So when we are beginning to move SQL databases into the cloud, in some cases we do still need to move them onto virtual machines, but in many cases we can transition very simply straight onto a platform as a service as your SQL. So, so that simplicity is a huge benefit for us. Uh, challenges or negatives, uh, that's always difficult. Uh, you know, I think there, there's still some way for all of the cloud platforms to go. Uh, I think Microsoft has really been accelerating its development recently. I think in some areas previously it was behind some of the other big players like AWS, but, but we've really seen that, that gap shrink dramatically over the last few years. So uh, they are really catching up, but uh, there may be still a few areas, maybe not as many releases, but new features uh, as AWS does. Uh, that can be a good thing and a bad thing, though, because you know you can have so many new releases of software that you can't keep up with it, and it really provides you no know, benefit. So uh, it's getting the right balance. So the last question. Hmm. So is this you know type of challenge that you know Azure or AWS is you know releasing? so many new features is a concern for your organization or, or maybe it's a you no know, feature so uh, it's both so as a challenge uh, from an architecture perspective yeah. uh, as a head of cloud architecture i guess the challenge we have is we have development teams around the globe uh, hundreds of them in different business units and when new features come out they often want to use them but they maybe don't know how we would apply our security requirements that we talked about previously into the context of that new tool set or, or should they be using that tool set at all or is there a better model and we'll often come to cloud architecture for that advice so uh, us being able to keep up to date with all those technologies can be difficult us being able to keep uh, guidance documents in place and, and have those security controls mapped to all the new features as they release uh, is, is a constant challenge but uh, having access to those features can obviously bring huge benefits around agility and speed. Thank you. So, you know, uh, thank you so much. An amazing session. Big fan of yours. Thank you. Thank you. Great to meet you.